today's scripture lesson is taken from philippines philippians chapter 2 chapter uh, verses 1 to 11 imitating christ humility if you have any encouragement from being united with christ if any comfort from his love if any fellowship with the spirit if any tenderness and compassion then make my joy complete by being like minded having the same love being one in spirit and purpose do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit but in humility consider others better than yourselves each of you should look not only to your own interests but also to the interests of others your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus who being in very nature god did not consider equality equality with god something to be grasped but made himself nothing taking the very nature of a servant being made in human likeness and being found in appearance as a man be humble himself and became obedient to death even death on a cross therefore god exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name that at the name of jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue confess that jesus christ is lord to the glory of god the father here and sir bible reading greetings to you all in the name of our lord and savior jesus christ taking this time to thank god for yet another opportunity to share god's word from the epistle to philippians the book of philippians can be studied in various perspective and we have taken exemplary life of apostle paul exemplary life of Jesus Christ and two more Timothy and Epaphroditus and last these two names are not very popular apostle paul we know well and jesus christ of course but these ordinary people like Timothy and Epaphroditus they also led an exam exemplary life that we would uh, emulate those lifestyle their attitude that's why paul has written very clearly imitate the examples which i have set before you philippians chapter 3 verse 17 i want to remind you again brothers and sisters join in imitating me the greek word which is used is mimicry mimicry imitate not only me and observe those who live according to the example you have in us and i also add three more examples their exemplary lives so that you and i can emulate those examples apart from apostle paul my dear friends yesterday we saw how apostle paul demonstrated he exhibited his attitude the very attitude is that of jesus christ he did not consider his life worth nothing and he lived for the betterment for the growth of the faith of philippian believers ministry is not a competition ministry is all about coming together <clears throat> accepting one another with all weaknesses encourage one another not party spirit not playing politics and all those carnal nature should not be found if you and i want to develop a deeper rooting in jesus christ and apostle paul how he loved earned for the believers at philippi was a great example friends we are called to be people friendly not program oriented 
love people <coughs> use things <coughs> yesterday we saw the first chapter an exegetical study emphasizing the influence of the gospel and other three important things today we will turn our attention to two important <coughs> people whom they exhibited attitude one is jesus christ which was a read to us actually it was a poem it was a hymn unluckily christianity has sung only the second part of the hymn every knee shall bow every tongue confess that jesus christ is the lord somehow christianity has left a written poem on the first part the humanity of jesus we have somehow put a halo behind jesus a bright light and saw jesus only as divine and started eulogizing started exalting worshiping but we miserably have forgotten down through the centuries jesus was a human only few songs hymns are written based on humanity of jesus we have crores of songs exalting jesus christ there is a little theological issue we often agree jesus is both absolutely fully completely divine and human but we have taken only part of divine and miss elevating recognizing particularly applying the humanity of jesus i think i wonder that could be the reason that we theologize so much about god jesus christ sing so well <coughs> worship well pronounce all those doxology well our doxology is good doxa means glory but our praxeology what is praxo i practice i do but the practice put into the practice of what we worship what we pronounce about god when we come into practical terms we miserably fail my dear friends today we are going to see two <coughs> exemplary life one is jesus christ in chapter 2 and then chapter 3 we will see about paul's attitude <coughs> and philippians book can be read otherwise also first chapter talks about christ is my life second chapter talks about christ is my mind third chapter talks about christ my goal and fourth chapter as all of you know christ is my joy if you go little more christ is my strength i can do all things whom christ if christ strengthens me my dear friends it is fully christological the whole philippians is all about christ christ and christ alone so we are called to imitate the very attitude of jesus christ and it is a hymn beautifully sung though it is written in a written form chapter 2 <clears throat> before he takes up jesus example paul again calls philippian believers to make his joy complete when would apostle paul be joyful in our fellowship and what is needed in fellowship not pulling the legs of others not pinpointing the mistakes of others god must have forgiven that people but we will never forgive that person we will label my dear friends in christianity in the spirituality pharisaical spirit has come in many organizations and churches we see people with the labels if god sees us with that lab label are we can we go to the presence of god and have communion with god and he says what are the essential things that should be demonstrated in any fellowship in family one is encouragement not discouraging people if anybody who is listening making others cry weep i am sorry we have not developed the attitude of jesus christ we have developed the carnal nature and how can we expect god to forgive our sins if we are in, not in the position to accept and forgive others 
Encouragement is very essential. That's why when he talks about Timothy, I am planning to send Timothy, Philippian believers, and when you see him, you will be more joyful, and he will be a person of comfort. Parakletos. He will be a person of joy. He will be a person of encouragement. Timothy. The very attitude. Encouraging one another is very essential. We live in the lost world. We still live in carnal nature. That is not the attitude of Jesus. Encouraging people, particularly encouraging the weak. When Jesus ministered, he did it. Encouraging the weak. Encouragement. Consolation from love. Console people. Very important. All those basic essentials are needed if anybody wants to go deeper in our spiritual life. It's all about others. See, we easily escape by singing, it's all about you, Lord. It's all about you. How many times we sing all about you? Is it not all about others? Is it not all about a person who is sitting nearby me? Is it not all about people who come to the church? Is it not all about people who come to our fellowship? Neglecting people, ignoring people, putting down the spirit of people, making them weep and cry and hurting people, and still we come to the church and say we are deeply rooted in Christ and we are matured. What kind of attitude, my dear friends? Encouragement, consolation. And the third thing, sharing in the spirit what we experience and we need to share with one another. The Holy Spirit of God talks to us through the Holy Word and talk to people, encourage one another. Sharing. These are the essential things that should be found not only in Methodist fellowship, any fellowship for that matter. That makes not only Paul's heart joyful, even God's heart. Make my joy complete by people of comfort and consolation, people of encouragement, people of love, sympathy, compassion. Wow. Fruit of the Spirit, I yeah. Compassion, sympathy, understanding the feelings, the hurt of others, weeping with them. Gone are those fruit of the Spirit. Make my joy complete. Having the same love in full accord and of one mind. What is the opposite? Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit. But in humility, listen, regard consider, reckon others as better than yourself. What is humility? Humility is not thinking lowly about myself. I am only a worm. I am an insect. This is not humility. According to this contest, humility is considering others better than myself. See, we got a wrong understanding. Humility means putting oil in the head, no tucking, sitting on the floor. See, we have given some definitions and speaking very low, humbling, mumbling voice. This is not humility. Humility is all about attitude, my dear friends. Consider others better than myself. Regard. If we have that attitude, we never put down people. We never hurt people. We are not on the judgment seat to judge people. We are on the mercy seat to show mercy to people. God is not sitting on the judgment seat when we go, go to him in prayer. He is always on the mercy seat, seat of grace, mercy, love, compassion, and he is willing to accept. And he is always available when we go to him with broken heart and contract spirit, with all our weaknesses. That's why I say we theologize, we spiritualize only about God. But taking those things, transferring, translating into our lives, we conveniently escape by pinpointing only Jesus Christ. 
and his divinity. Consider others better than yourselves. So who am I then? I am nothing. He is everything. She is everything. Others are everything. We are very good in singing. He is my everything. He is my all. La? We know all those things. This is a great challenge. That is why I am talking about attitude. Inner attitude. See, again I say, Christianity is all today about the externalities. Talents, competence, all those external things, giftings, glossolalia, speaking in tongues, anointment of the Holy Spirit, all those externalities we keep on emphasizing and leave the basic essentials of exhibiting Christ-like character, my dear friends, in human, in human level. That's why first part of him is very essential that we need to put into practice. Never try the second part. Second part of him is only attributed to Jesus Christ. Never respect. Others will uh, come and kneel down before me. I will have the bossing attitude. I will take this position and show who am I and everybody will come to me, bow down before me and my name shall be exalted. Hello, stop. The second part is only given to Jesus Christ, not to you and me. But the first part is given to us. What are the attributes of Jesus Christ? Before that, verse 4, let each of you look not to your own interest, but to the interest of others. Again, emphasize fall on, falls on others. We are not called to <clears throat> not look to our own interest. We are called to look to our own interest. But do not be satisfied by looking at our own interest and our own needs. Look at the interest of others. <clears throat> What is joy? You know the acronym J-O-Y. J stands for Jesus first. O stands for others next. U st y stands for you last. It could be L-A-S-T. It could be L-O-S-T. That is joy. My dear friends, as we keep listening, can we analyze our attitude, mind this evening? Lord, make me more like thee in my attitude. Let the beauty of Jesus be seen in me, Lord, when I relate with people. Don't be simply satisfied by singing this chorus in worship. Even in practical terms, Lord. By the way, do we have enemies? So that we can bind those enemies, people pray, Lord. Bible doesn't talk about we have enemies. No, 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 no. Satan is the only one arc enemy for us. People are not at all our enemies. Even if they are enemies, Bible encourages to consider them as friends. Bless them. So do not look at your own interest, but the interest of others. Now, verse 5, that is a key verse. Let the same mind, noya, mind, be in you that was in Christ Jesus. So Christ Jesus left footsteps, left his model on the cross. Who was he? What was his position? What was the privilege of Jesus? Two things. One is, he was in the form of God, Morphetio. Morphe. Form of God. He was not only in the form of God, and it says, <clears throat> Morphe Theo and he was equal with God Isa Theo Morphe Theo and Isa Theo form of God and equal to God what a great privilege and position that Jesus possessed you know what did Jesus do with this position this privilege this is the highest privilege in the form of God like God, equal to God. Almost God. You know the mathematics. Equal. God equal to Jesus Christ. If you have seen me, you have seen my father. So Jesus is God. And what did Paul say? 
the word which was used is jesus did not regard look at the word think consider reckon he did not regard equality with god though he was in the form of god equality with god he could have claimed but what did he do something to be exploited the word which is used is grasp hold on tightly firmly he did not hold the position but still he was god but in his thought he he translated his his attitude his thought something to be exploited he did not hold on he emptied himself the word which was used is ekenosin it is given in aorist keno from the word keno the theory of kenosis self emptying he himself humbled he himself became obedient look at the word emphasizing pronoun someone father did not come and tell him he himself that is why we call it self emptying it's not somebody who will come and correct us we ourselves should make ourselves empty and what is the meaning of emptying does that mean jesus ceased to be god no 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 he is still god but he does not use the power and he dis- does not exploit that position and privilege and he became took the form of a slave morphe doula doula means slave not diakonos diakonos means servant servant can ask question to the master but doulas he or she cannot has to absolutely obey the master he took the form of the slave now imagine my dear friends where was the form of god morphe theo morphe dulo stoop down to the level of a slave attitude attitude many a time in our lives pride takes overrides in our relationship in family in fellowship he took the form of a slave being born in a human likeness anthropos human likeness not only slave became human that's why humanity of jesus should be celebrated my dear friends see as we meditate on the cross was jesus divine or human when he was on the cross he was both he was both but he did not use his divine power on the cross rather as a human being he suffered that's why father lord lord why have you forsaken me the forsaken of the father the excruciating pain had he exercised his divine power on the cross you know what would have happened but jesus did not you see you can be a assistant professor hod principal bank manager be in the position but develop an attitude that you need to relate with even a pun are we willing to stoop down to any level or only we relate with people like minded people hmm. i am educated he is also educated i am wealthy he is also wealthy this is not the attitude of jesus christ stooping down to even slave stooping down to the level of man where is god theos and where is anthropos stooping down to the level that is attitude my dear friends may god give us the spirit as we listen to god's word the exemplary attitude of jesus christ do you are you sensitive that we are not worthy as you listen if anybody hears this word and feels that you are not worthy that is the right attitude brother i know this passage very well brother i preached many time i took bible study on this passage that is not the response that god expects lord i humble i obey i accept myself i have miserably failed you lord and i desperately need you 
to renew my mind as we have sung a beautiful song renew my mind lord transform my spirit lord human likeness being found in human form not divine form equal with god in the form of god but he was found in human form not divine form you see the attitude don't hold on to the position don't hold on to the privileges but the responsibility of stooping down going down to the level of any people irrespective of caste irrespective of education wealth are we willing to stoop down that is sacrifice my dear friends that is selfless are we ready it hurts but are we willing to get hurts and he humbled himself jesus humbled himself and became obedient till where till the point of death humility obedience now you understand what is the meaning of humility you understand what is the meaning of obedience all self emptying this character reflect, reflects self emptying obedience humility all these things should be expressed in emptying myself this nine onwards you know how did father respond uh, exalted uh, but my dear friends the first part of jesus exemplary attitude we are called to imitate that's why paul has written you may be imitators of me and also imitators of jesus christ mimicry jesus did not consider his power his authority his position but for the sake of you and me he completely up absolutely he emptied himself consider nothing of his life but he thought of me and you we'll turn to philippians chapter 3 to quickly see the exemplary attitude life of apostle paul chapter 3 paul talks about his own life and he is actually cautioning about some jewish people not the whole jew group uh, jewish group but a, a sect beware of the dogs these dogs are nothing not the literal dogs but a group of jews beware of the evil workers beware of those who mutilate the flesh he is talking about jews who take boast on circumcision that's why he talks about flesh three times he uses the word repeatedly beware 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 dogs evil workers and mutilators workers they are all christian workers they serve christ but be careful beware of them why we are the circumcision because we worship in the spirit of god and boast in christ jesus we have no confidence in the flesh no we empty ourselves we never take confidence in our flesh in rome in greece particularly in rome great people when they die in their tomb the inscription would be very long and if anybody if you find in their tomb the inscription is too long and praise worthy trustworthy that person is a big person considered as a big person credentials are more important in rome after they die they write all the credentials about themselves inscribing in their tomb that was the pattern paul uses the term if i boast about my credentials can i boast you jewish people you boast about your circumcision you boast about your work you boast about law can i boast about myself it's a kind of a competitive spirit and paul is asking if anyone has a reason to be confident in the flesh i have more philippians chapter 3 verse 4 and he kept writing eight credentials thinks that he can elevate boast eight things paul talks about he is not lying 
he says circumcised on the eighth day yes i was so religious i was also a jew i was circumcised jewish people you say you are circumcised on the eighth day i too i can also boast second i am a member of a people of israel of the tribe of benjamin ancestral pride spiritual pride religious pride of the tribe of benjamin a hebrew born of hebrew as to the law a pharisee as to zeal a persecutor of the church as to righteousness under the law i was blameless all those eight credentials apostle paul is putting forth before philippian believers and say particularly to this jewish people sect of jewish group he says i can also boast can i boast about all those eight things but he says verse 7 it's a powerful yet a transition yet yet whatever gains i had these i have come to regard look at the word again reckon regard as loss l o s s loss these were actually gain kerde gain but i consider it as a loss because of christ exactly following the footsteps of jesus christ in his attitude more than that i regard everything as loss what is everything all those eight credentials in my life i could have boasted but i consider as loss for christ's sake and what is so specific because everything has lost because of the surpassing value of knowing christ so what is the meaning of knowing jesus christ we often talk about look grow in the knowledge of jesus christ what is the meaning surpassing value the value is very adorable surpassing value of jesus christ when i make myself nothing when i make myself empty i continue to know jesus christ friends it is not filling it is emptying we talk about knowledge is filling la but real knowledge of jesus christ is emptying we continue to see what is the meaning of emptying for his sake jesus sake i have suffered the loss of all things again and again he says it's a loss and i regard them as rubbish <coughs> garbage in another terms it says i consider them as garbage rubbish in order that i may gain christ you say paul is christological again and again christ is my everything in order to gain christ he says i consider all my credentials as rubbish and be found in him not having a righteousness of my own attacking jewish people okay that comes from the law he talks about circumcision now law these are the two things which usually a jew would boast but one that comes through faith in christ emphasizing faith sola fide righteousness from god based on faith and paul continues to say how he empties i want to know christ knowing christ he is emptying my position my privilege my credentials and the power of his resurrection i want to know what is power today understanding power is filling i am sorry power is not filling power is empty the real power is powerlessness do you know that people say receive power 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 real power genuine biblical understanding of power should empty me make me nothing and should come to the conclusion lord i am nothing and what i have possess is nothing friends easy to say but difficult to put into practice are we willing that is what cross teaches us that is what jesus teaches us that's what paul teaches us same attitude as that of jesus christ be in you my dear friends the power of his resurrection knowledge of jesus christ 
sharing of his suffering by becoming like him in his death. What is sharing his suffering? Likeness in his death? Obedience. Humility. Putting off all the pride. Paul says, I have not attained it. Still, I do one thing. Actually, Paul is doing two things. Even he says one thing. Twofold. One is, forgetting all my credentials, not sin. This is not talking about sin. Forgetting all those credentials and putting back rubbish, garbage, skabalon. The word which is used is skabalon. Skabalon is cow dung. In another translation it is written human excretion, waste. Repulsive term. And one more term which is used is waste leaf. After we eat, the leaf is known as waste leaf. What is waste leaf? What is garbage? Listen, my education, my beauty, my power, my wealth, my caste, the things which you boast. That's why Paul says, if at all I boast, I boast him who crucified on the cross. My dear friends, as you listen, what are the things that you take, that we take confidence into our life? Boast. If at all I boast, I boast him, Christ, and him crucified. No more that I live. It is Christ who lives in me. He is my life. He is my mind. He is my goal. And he is my joy. And he is my strength. How? That should be expressed in relating, in understanding one another. That is the attitude. That's why Paul says, <clears throat> I do not consider, I am closing, I have made it my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting all those credentials and straining forward what lies ahead. I still press on toward the goal. Who is the goal? Jesus Christ. The attitude of Jesus Christ is my goal. Not puffing with all the knowledge of the scripture. No, 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 no. Attitude of Jesus is my goal. I strain myself. I put all my efforts. The, the word strain. Labor pain. I take labor pain somehow to know Jesus Christ and experience the power of his resurrection. All those things. He's making only one thing. Lord, I am nothing. Easy to say. But can we say to our friends, can we relate with that attitude with our friends? Don't simply pray, worship and escape. Pray, worship and translate, transfer into our relationship, relating with one another in our fellowship. The goal for the praise of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. 15. Let those of us, those who are mature, not perfect. God is not calling us for perfection. Those who are matured as we grow in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. As we make ourselves empty, matured, be of the same mind. And if you think differently, Philippian believers, if anybody is thinking differently, God will reveal to you. As you keep growing, as you meditate God's word, as you wait upon God's feet, it is God who will reveal you the very attitude that we develop. Different attitude. As you listen this verse tonight, my dear friends, are we listening with healthy attitude or some different attitude at the back of the mind? Yeah, we have heard enough. Yeah. How many preachers we have seen in this pulpit? God will reveal you what kind of attitude we take as we remember, particularly this deeper life. So what is deeper life? Lord, I am nothing. What I have is nothing. Only when we make emptying, we go deeper. We gain Christ. By losing ourselves, we gain Christ. By considering myself worth nothing and thinking others better, that is deeper. What is deeper? Not only looking at the interest of mine, but also 
look at the interest of others. Brothers and sisters, join in imitating me and Jesus Christ. Shall we close our eyes? Just one minute. I'm just prompted by the Spirit of God. It's night time. I know we have miserably failed to meet this standard of God. Accept ourselves who we are before God. Real prayer is accepting my inability and asking for God's ability. Accepting my inadequacy and asking for God's adequacy. My dear friends, are we willing to humble ourselves and accept who we are in our attitude, in our mind, in relating with one another? We stumble in many ways. Shall we come to God in this night time with broken heart? And contrite spirit, Lord, all my credentials are nothing, garbage, cow dung, waste. Or are we continuing, do we continue in the same pattern of life, causing division, developing bitterness, dividing spirit, not obeying the authority? Accepting others with all their weaknesses and limitations. Relating only with the people whom we love. Shall we ask God to remove, to annihilate all those carnal nature as we come to the cross. Be washed by the precious blood of the Lamb. Lord, this is our prayer. And this is our passion. And this is our desire that we want to inculcate and imbibe the very mind of you, Lord, in our life and in our relationship. With thanksgiving, in Jesus' name we pray.